Hello everyone, welcome to Data Engineer YouTube channel. In this video, we will see how we can use stored procedures in Azure Data Factory. So let's get started. We will see the architecture first and then we will do the practical part. Okay. So for that, what you need is basically you need obviously uh, to use stored procedure in uh, you know Azure Data Factory, you need a database. Right. So let me just create a database. Let's say we are currently using SQL database. It can be any database. It can be an Oracle database. It can be a SQL database or any other database. Now the question is you will say, okay, SQL is, let's say uh, we are using Azure SQL. That's easy to use, right? Uh, because obviously data factory is also of a product of Microsoft and Azure SQL is also a product of Microsoft. So the connectivity is very easy. But what if you want to connect Oracle database with R? Uh, you know Azure Data Factory. Okay, so the thing is we just need one thing. So let's say this is Oracle database Now the thing is we need a self-hosted integration runtime So if I just show you the integration runtime, so here we have an option So integration runtime, we need to create a self-hosted integration runtime uh, Basically what it does is it takes computation from your local uh, You know computer itself so in this case, you may need a virtual machine and then you need to do that bulky setup to use Oracle database in Azure Data Factory. But today, we will see how we will be using Azure SQL with the Azure Data Factory. So let's focus on that part. If you want to connect Oracle database, I will create a separate video or you can see my self-hosted integration and time tutorial to check how basically we can connect uh, you know, uh, any database, either, either it is a local SQL database or a Oracle database, any database with the help of self-hosted integration runtime. Our video is also already created for that. Okay. Now, uh, let me just, uh, you know, rub this part. Okay. Because we will not be focusing on Oracle DB, we will be focusing on Azure SQL. So, now I have a Azure SQL database. Okay. Now, the thing is, I want to first connect it with my ADF. So let's say this is my ADF as your data factory. I want to I want to create a connection between both of them, right? Now for that we we can use normal you know integration runtime. Uh, by default we have a auto resolve integration runtime. We can use that. But the thing is how to create this connection? So how to create this connection? So we need a link service. Okay, we need a new link service to connect the Azure SQL with the Azure data factory. Okay. Now, obviously, you need to have a Azure SQL resource also in your Azure portal, okay? Uh, if you don't know how to create a Azure SQL resource, I have already created a video on it. So, creating SQL database and server in uh, Azure. Also told you the difference between what's DTU, vCore and what's shared pool. So, you can watch this video and then you can come back and, you know, work on this part if you want, right? If you already have an Azure SQL resource, that's totally fine. Now, I am assuming you have an Azure SQL resource and an Azure Data Factory resource. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to create a link service between both of them to connect both, right? Let's see how we can do that. So, for that, I'll go to Azure Data Factory. I'll go to link service. I'll create a link service, a connection between our Azure Data Factory and then our Azure SQL. Now, for, uh, you know, Azure SQL, I'll use Azure SQL database, right? I'll click on continue. I'll give it a name. Okay. Azure SQL database link service. I'll give it this. Okay. Now it is asking us uh, with which integration runtime we shall connect it. So I'll be using auto resolve integration runtime only. Okay. Now as this particular, you know, uh, database is in my, uh, you know, this subscription itself. So I'll choose this subscription. Otherwise, if it is not, we can go for enter manually and you can you know enter your server name the database name and the authentication method okay i because it is in my subscription only so i'll use this thing use this feature i'll select my subscription i'll select my subscription uh, you know the server name so for example this is my subscription and inside the subscription let's say there are five server names so it will show me all the five server names based on my uh, you know assess part so now it is showing me this particular server. I'll click on it. I have recently created this server and then I have these two databases. So I'll select the second one because I have some data in my second database. So I'll click on this. Now the question is 
uh, you know authentication type so to connect with the uh, you know sql uh, server you have this many uh, you know can i can say authentications you can use any of it so most commonly use our service principal and then we can even use system manager identity and i i'll go for sql authentication so my username is subjeevan okay i'll put it out okay perfect and let me put my password okay now i'll do the test connection part okay let's see if my uh, connection is passed or failed okay my connection is passed now you may feel, you may see some you know issues when you are connecting then what you need to do is it may be due to firewall so you can go to firewall let's say you know uh, this is my server so i am just uh, let me just go to my resource group so this is my server this is my database this is my data factory and this is my block storage so i'll go to my server okay now once i am in my server so uh, sorry my bad i'll go to my you know database so once i am in my database i have something called access control so basically from here i can give the access to the data factory part and second thing is in my server also so if i go to my server all right let it open okay okay so this is my server now uh, what we can do is basically uh we we need to white list all the ips okay so for doing that what i need to do is i need to go to firewall uh, 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 uh. all right uh just a second sorry it, uh i confuse you so it may, it is in database basically so i'll go to firewall okay so firewall is in networking part so i'll go to networking okay and now from here so see i have white listed these many ips so i can white list and i can even do a, an exception that allow azure services and resources to access this server that means if anything adf or any other source or service is uh, which is of azure itself is requesting this as it will white list that particular ip okay this happens if your you know firewall is on on okay so even you can turn off the firewall also that's also possible okay but i will not recommend uh, you do that okay now uh, let's see uh, our connection is created so i click on create and our link service is created so this is done so we have finally created a link service okay all right just a moment okay all right so we have done this part so we have created a link service now the thing is uh, how to use stored procedure so what i have done is i have logged in using the query editor also uh, now i have create uh, i have i was having this query to create a table and i have inserted these values into this particular table called dummy table you can also see it here now what i will do is i will create a stored procedure named i am stored procedure so let me just uh, you know run this query okay so this query is executed and let me see if this stored procedure is created or not okay so now just a second let's confirm on it okay so there is already a object name in this database okay it's created the thing is it's not refresh so it is not we are not able to see it here right not an issue now the question is how to use that particular stored procedure see we created a stored procedure called i am stored procedure and now i want to use it in my adf pipeline okay so let's say i have a copy activity and i want to use this stored procedure whatever is the result of that particular stored procedure i want to use it and i want to dump it into my block storage let's see how we can do that so for that i will click on plus i create a pipeline uh, all right now i will be using my copy activity let me drag and drop this copy activity okay now in this source i i i need to create a data set okay so i'll create a new data set because i don't have it okay now i need to tell what's my source it's a sql azure sql database i'll click on it i'll press continue it is asking me for the link service how it shall connect with that sql database okay i recently created that link service if you remember 
Azure SQL Database Link Service. I will use this. Now the question is, it is asking me for table name. Okay. So now I have only one table called dbo.dummy table. I will use that. Okay. And I am saying from connection or store and I will press OK. Now the data set is created. Okay. Now the thing is I want to query. So see, either you can use this table as such. Either you can query over this table. You can write a query here. Or you can even use a stored procedure. I, I will be going for stored procedure because this video is dedicated to stored procedure. I will click on this and then I will use this uh, recently created stored procedure that is I am stored procedure. If you remember we recently executed this command right. Now the thing is I have this and even I can preview the data. So if I will click on preview data you will see all the data present in your uh, you know whatever is the result of that stored procedure execution you will see it here. Right. Now uh, you, it's up to you like how you want to dump it. Okay. So this was the source now in sync it's up to you. Uh, where you need to dump. Let's say I want to dump it into a Azure uh, block storage. Again, again, uh, it will ask me for which format you want to store it. I'll, I'll go for, let's say, parquet file because it's highly compressed. Okay, based on the condition. So, even I have created a video on different file formats and which file format is best. Depending on the condition, uh, we shall go for the file format. As of now, we have very small data. I'll go for parquet file only. I will click on continue. I will give it the name parquet only. Parquet sync maybe. And then now again it is asking me for a link service. Now the thing is. Okay. So Azure SQL and ADF are, is connected with this link service of SQL which we recently created. Same way ADF should be connected with my blog storage. See blog storage is my storage account. Uh, that also need a connection with Azure Data Factory. For that also I have already created a link service. It, uh, you know it is very easy as compared to creating a link service between SQL and ADF. But in a similar manner only. Okay. So I have already that uh, link service named Azure Block Storage Link Service. See you know uh, ADF is very smart. I have two link service in my link service section. But it is showing me only one. Because it knows that this is only the blog storage link service okay now it is asking me for file path i'll go to folder structure okay so i have these many you know containers i'll go to my sync container okay and see it have already have some files okay it's fine uh, i'll click on okay okay in my sync container i want the data now the thing is there are two things see if uh, as of now if i go to my data set okay sync data set so, I am not sure what I name I gave. So, let me check. Okay. It, it is parquet sync. Okay. Now, here I am giving the container name. Okay. But I am not giving the file name. Now, the thing will be it will uh, you know my output will get partitioned and there will be four or five files created. Okay. Now, to avoid that if you don't want any partition you can give a file name afterwards. So, I will add it final file. Okay. So, I am giving it a uh, file name. So I am uh, in the data set is itself I am hard coding it. Okay. If you want a scattered file it is fine you can go. Okay. Not an issue. It will work. But if you want a single file. Single parquet file. You should put the name here at the end. Okay. Now uh, my source is created. My sync is created. Let me review the pipeline. Okay. So okay. Now just see. Let me just minimize this. So copy behavior. So I, I uh, you know, I just want, uh, I want nothing. So it's optional also, so not an issue. Okay. Uh, earlier there was create and depress. I guess it's hidden, so not an issue. It's fine. You, uh, if you want to use this option, you can. Otherwise, it's not required. Okay. Now let me just go to, uh, you know, I, can, I let me review all the settings. So maximum data integration in it. It's fine. I, uh, I'm doing it to auto. So based on you know your requirement you can modify the things. Okay. I am not going for anything. Let me just publish it. Okay. Let me publish whatever I have done. Okay. So what will happen is these changes will be permanent on my area. Let's see. Uh, once I publish it. See. Once I publish it. It will firstly validate and then publish. Okay. Now either you can simply validate it here from here itself. 
otherwise it will first validate and then publish if there is an error it will not publish okay uh, now uh, our pipeline is successfully published that means we got no error okay let me now execute this or debug it all right you can even add a trigger so if you have seen all my previous videos you will be you know aware of these terminologies now this is cute let's wait let's wait I'm very excited to, the, to see the data in my, you know, final parquet file. I'll show you the data also. So don't worry. Let's wait. I know I'm using a student ID, so, you know, it may, may take time. So let's wait. Okay. All right, so finally our copy activity is succeeded. All right, let's see the output. Now to see the output, there are multiple ways. Okay, first thing is let me go to my blob storage. Okay, so my blob storage was Azure blob demo storage. Okay, now if I go to my blob storage and I may go to my containers. All right, let it load. Okay, so I have something called sync. I remember I use sync container. And then I gave it a name called final file. Now see, you can see the timestamp also. It's 1431. That means something around 232, right? Earlier on the older files, okay? So I, I did some experiments and this is the older files. But this is the file which is generated, okay? A single file is generated, as I told. Otherwise, if I would have not written final file, so something like this would have been created. So partition. So these are called partitions, okay? Now, uh, alright, so let me show you the inside output. Obviously, we can't directly download and read the file because it is in binary format. Party files are in binary format. Either you need to, you know, uh, use Pandas or any library of Python to read it. Number one option. Number two option, you can connect it with your Power BI and read it the final, uh, even this file. Number three option is, I don't want to do anything. I can even simply go to my data factory and go to my data set. And let me just show you by clicking on preview. That's it. So you'll be able to see the data. Simple. Right? So this data is present in this market. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, like how basically uh, to use stored procedure in Azure Data Factory. Let me give a quick recap of the, you know, uh, architecture part. Uh, let me just... Control A or I'll just erase everything. Okay. Alright. So now, just a second, my pen tab. Okay. Just a moment. Yeah. Perfect. Now see, what we did was, so we had a SQL server, Azure SQL server. We connected with our ADF, uh, the Azure Data Factory, with the help of a link service. So we created a link service. Right? So we created a link service, we created a connection between both of them, and then we used stored procedure to get the data from the SQL server and use it in our ADF. So this is a very practical scenario. You will see it very often. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, definitely put it in the comment section. I will definitely reply over it. Thank you.